I'm here talking with Richard and John. We're down here at uh, the River Glass and uh, we're down by the NSC basically, which I remember all too well in 2015, those days after the, the, the massive flood, the, the devastation. And then, I don't know how long it was after that, we, we saw some action in here. They were definitely uh, trawling it out. But anyway, you saw my last video where we were looking upstream a bit, but yes. your, your angle's definitely down here. You're concerned. Well, concerns is over the full length of the river. Right. And the impact that the, not just the dry weather, but the low compensation flow that Manx Utilities released from Baldwin Reservoir. It's never been set to any acceptable standards. They've never undertaken an environmental impact assessment. And it's, uh, when you look back at the history of this river and the numbers of fish that you used to get, uh, there's a coloration between the flow in the river mm. and the numbers of fish. Uh, this river here, up further upstream at uh, Baldwin, just at the nooks of the two rivers. There used to be a fish trap, 1952, and uh, operated by the fisheries department. And the first year that was in operation, on the 12th of September, they caught 40 salmon. By then, they had 40 salmon. Mm. Uh, they used to take, on average, uh, 90 salmon a year with an average weight of seven pounds, and 30 sea trout with an average weight of three and a half pounds, which they took off to the hatchery at Kirk Michael where they uh, hatched the eggs out and stocked the rivers on the island. And that went right through to 1965 when uh, Douglas Corporation cut the compensation flow from what was 2 million gallons a day to half a million gallons, which is what we have now. Uh, and that decimated the river. It's no different from any other species on this planet. The moment you reduce or damage the habitat, they disappear. And that's exactly what's happened here. Okay, uh, you're, you're a keen fisherman, so you've seen this first hand yourself. Yes, uh, Douglas used to be uh, excellent. Um, plenty of sea trout, plenty of uh, salmon. Uh, same with Solby and the Neb. But these last few years, um, in fact, uh, there's very few fish coming back to Douglas. Uh, funny enough, we've seen one this morning, the sea mm. trout. Um, and uh, I was at the harbour, and there's a couple there, but... but the numbers are well, well down on all rivers, but that's uh, that's according to all all the rivers on in the UK and Scotland as mm -hmm. well. They're all concerned about it, um, but I think the the board could do a little bit more uh, in finding out how many is coming back and how many smolts are going out mm -hmm. out to sea. A smolt is a, a, a small uh, juvenile salmon going out to sea, right. um, and uh, he goes out to sea for one winter and comes back as what they call a grilf and the multi-winter fish uh, stays out there for two three years. Well, we have had a very dry summer, has that yes. added to this problem particularly this year? It has, yeah. but the, basically you go back to what the base flow is in the river and it's pathetically low. Uh, under our calculations we've estimated that the compensation flow from Baldwin should be at somewhere in the region of 1.8 million gallons a day and that's just simply to maintain the ecology of the river. Because once the river drops to the sort of a level it is now, there's no habitat for the fish, there's no invertebrates, and any sort of pollution that gets into the river, uh, there's no dilution, so it has a far greater impact. Mm. What I'm intrigued at here is, and I saw alluded at the beginning was, that it seems to have silted, or whatever you want to call it, just graveled up again. Um, and this leads on from the last interview I did with Alf about yeah. his concerns about potential for floods. Do you, do you have that same view? Uh, not really, no. I oh. mean, rivers rivers everywhere, have, when you get these big floods, you get large movements of gravel, mm. you get trees falling into the river. Uh, we've seen that at Laxey and the problems it caused there. Um, it's the land... Mr Kane, his problem is further upstream, where the landowners are perhaps not checking and monitoring the riverbanks on their property. Mm -hmm. right, they're riparian owners, as Mr Kane is, and... Uh, they do have a duty to maintain the banks. Uh, I noticed on that video you done with Mr Kane, there'd been a considerable build-up of gravel there. But I also noticed that he also has a number of cattle in the field. Mm -hmm. And anywhere else, especially in the UK now, they're starting to fence off watercourses to stop cattle entering watercourses because they break the banks down. Mm -hmm. So when there's a flood, there's more erosion. So there's a whole lot of little issues which could be addressed simply by educating the, 
the landowners, the riparian owners, okay. and uh, hopefully prevent floods because that area of Tremode there was flooded in 1967, uh, 1930, but certainly in 1967 when there was a metre and a half of water at the laundry, uh, and again, again 19, in 2015. We're going to get these once in 50 or once in 100 year floods, and there's no way that you can actually the amount of engineering work that's required to control it or prevent problems is, is unbelievable. But the problem is really, it's a floodplain. Mr. Kane's land, uh, the industrial site of Tremode, Port of Shea Meadow here, down at uh, Hills Meadow, it's all floodplain. And people, we know exactly what happens. You build on a floodplain, there's a good chance you're going to get flooded. Yeah. Sure, well, is this a floodplain here? Because this got flooded, didn't it? Well, this used to yes. be a, a bit of a bog here. Right. Yeah. It so was you're saying it could happen again? And it could happen that again. Would... Oh, it, yeah. was, it was used as landfill for Douglas, for Tip. Yeah. Uh, and the levels are built up. Okay. Well, and also to yeah. that point, Paul, yeah. uh, when uh, you, you've got the silt going into the river, especially at the back end, when the fish spawn and put their eggs in the gravel, the silt comes on top mm. and kills them. All right. So that the life ends at that, that stage. Yeah. That's particularly a problem on the likes of the River Neb, uh, where you have silt from the mine workings, uh, clogs the gravel up, and of course at Peel it fills the marina up, mm. uh, 5,000 tonne a year going in there. It's, uh, there's works, works needed on the, on the, uh, the mine workings. So, so about your fishing then, you, you, it would be helpful to have this looked after a bit more. I mean, I know they, that the DOI and the DEFA come under yeah. your thing yeah. because you've got the fish on the DEFA and you've got DOI for the actual river banks and the so river. The, the thing is, is I know the board uh, is, is struggling for money mm. uh, and that's always going to be the case. Uh, but there is a lot of people out here who will volunteer to help. Mm. Uh, they don't seem to get volunteers or they don't ask for volunteers. And that's a point. Most of the hatcheries, small hatcheries across, are run by volunteers. Mm. Um, the hatchery at Laxey, I don't think it's been used for two years. So, uh, and I think it's it's a problem with uh, labour. Uh, yeah. They've not got the money. I think they're, they're definitely stretching. I know they're busy in Laxey, aren't they, DOI? Yeah. Yeah. What, what's, your, what's your solution? Well, we just mentioned the silting up in this area here. Mm. It's particularly bad, a little bit further up at McDonald's. Yeah. And the Victorians, when they formed this river channel, knew what they were doing. And that section of the river up there, river up there, but riverbed up there, was hard laid. It was stone on edge. Uh, unfortunately, when the, the works were done here, uh, when this place was all sorted out, the MEA went into the river and started laying cable ducts in the river. And they broke up a lot of the hard laid riverbed. Because that used to be self cleaning up there though, because of the. Yeah dynamics of the river yeah. um, they made a mess of it uh, there was a big scour pool formed where they'd broken the, the hard laid river bed and there's a large amount of gravel and uh, fill built up on the riverbed that side and that in fact it decreases the channel size so when there's a big flood uh, it overtops and to get the fish back with more flows you said is, is required but they can't just do that, can they? They need to keep the, what they're doing, you'll which always, they've done for a long time right now. So. You'll always get uh, summer levels. Yeah. Um, if we could have winter levels all the time, it'd be great, yeah. but we can't. Uh, and, and as climate goes on and it changes, uh, there's going to be more problems. Uh, my concern is we're, we have to look after the fish and habitat. Uh, and I know uh, the water board will say, well, people are probably more important. Uh, that's why we're not releasing more compensation floor. That's, that's a fair comment too. So you have to uh, come to a happy medium balance. I'd, I would have a slightly different argument on that. The, we've got two rivers which are very badly impacted by abstraction, Solby and the Glass. Um, as I said before earlier, they've never, the Manx Utility has never been required to undertake an environmental impact assessment and to establish what is a reasonable flow to maintain the ecology of the rivers. Uh, the, most, the majority of the water that runs into the Solby goes down the hydro scheme. And to be honest, that's, it's a bit of a joke. Uh, when the Solby was first proposed, it was going to be built in two stages. Stage one was going to be, uh, have a fish pass in it. 
which would have allowed the migratories to get above the, the dam and spawn further up. I mean, sea trout used to spawn as far up as Druidale Splash. Um, but of course, because of the oil scare at the time, and uh, some bright spark come up with the idea, let's extend the reservoir, let's build it phase two, and uh, we'll install a hydro scheme. Now the problem, they, they created all sorts of problems there, because there's not enough water to operate a, a hydro scheme. You know, it's what, 1% or something, isn't it? Sometimes it's like 1%, that? Yeah. it's not even that. Oh, right. uh, Tim Baker told us last year that it supplied the electricity for 1,000 homes. And when you look at the average price for a home, for the electricity bill, it's more like 750, 760. Um, but the other thing which happened at Solby uh, is that the works that were involved disturbed a lot of rock and stone. So the riverbed from the from the reservoir for a considerable distance downstream is hardcore. Um, in this river here, you can see the rounded pebbles, the gravel, and that's ideal for salmon to spawn in. But uh, when it's hardcore, they can't lay, the, they can't dig the stone up. They can't lay their eggs, and of course, uh, there's uh, probably issues over water temperature, the, the flow, the, all sorts of things which come with a big reservoir like that. Just to finish, then, what did you have? You asked anyone for anything? I mean, have you gone to the department? We've, we've spoken, uh, friends of the earth have spoken to DEFA and Manx Utilities some years back, and had correspondence with different people in that time. And really, it's a waste of time. The one thing they can do, because they've done nothing. The one thing in terms of water use, which it could be doing, is meters. Because what's happening in the UK, where they have real water shortages, which we don't actually have here, uh, consumption goes down by as much as 30%. Uh, I noticed that uh, Mr. Pratchett was on Manx Radio last week, and he said that when they've introduced the hose pipe dan, van, water usage went up by a tremendous amount at night because people were watering their spring, using the sprinklers to water their gardens. Well, it's an ongoing debate. Thank you very much for your time today and we'll see what happens on this, yeah? Thank you. Yes,